Hey folks, Guay. A friend of mine, uh, another Canadian YouTuber, um, has been tweeting lately. His name's Bothered Boy, by the way. He's been tweeting lately that he's trying to get to 3,000 subscribers. And he has made a promise that when he gets to 3,000 subscribers, by the end of November 2021, he will make a $300 donation to a charity. The charity he chose, despite the fact that he's all the way over in Ontario, he has chosen to make that donation to a group here in Halifax, Nova Scotia, called Halifax Mutual Aid. They do incredible work. They are advocates and they are providers for some of our city's most vulnerable. They work lately, especially with people who are homeless, houseless, underhoused. See, we have a crisis here in Halifax. We have a lot of people who, who are living in, in tents in our city parks. Now the city is, is doing, they're working diligently. I believe they're working diligently to, to help these folks out. But as you know, homelessness is not a simple problem. It is incredibly complicated. There's lots of factors. There's lots of things to be considered. There are lots of things to be sensitive to. And groups like Halifax Mutual Aid, they're really well positioned and they're really well equipped um, to help with a crisis like this. So I was taken by the fact that Bothered Boy wanted to make this donation. And I pledged on Twitter that I would match his donation if he gets there. But a question was tweeted to, to Bothered Boy the other day, and that's what I want to discuss right now. It says, I thought Ed's church's furnace was broken and they were cold inside, hence his beanie. Why would he spend money on something else besides that if his congregation is cold during the service? This is a very worthwhile question. It's a question that we can learn from and it's, a, it's, a, it's the kind of question that we can, we can grow because of. It's a wonderful catalyst. First, I wanna discuss the beanie comment. This isn't a beanie, this is a toque. This particular toque that I am fashioning today is a toque that my dad gave me and has his company logo on there. They're warm, they're effective, they're wonderful, especially if you don't, especially if you're follically challenged like I am. They're great. Everybody someday will be wearing one. But that's not really the point. The point is, why am I spending $300 when my congregation's cold? Why am I spending $300 when my congregation needs to buy a new furnace? Why am I spending $300 when my congregation is looking at an expense that is going to be tens of thousands of dollars. The answer, and, and, and just to be clear, um, I'm not spending church money. I didn't commit church money to, to Halifax Mutual Aid if Bothered Boy gets to 3,000 subscribers. I've committed Patreon money. So each month we receive money through our Patreon account. In September, it was $200, and we found a home for that. In, in October, it was over $200, and we found a home for that. It looks to me like November is going to be well over $300, and we found a home for that, Halifax Mutual Aid. So this isn't church money that's coming in. This is the money that is donated to me by people from all over the world, and I am still amazed at that. People who give all different uh, amounts, we're able to take that money and we're able to share it with our community, with the people in our community that, that are in need, with organizations that are in position to help the way we wished we could help. But with that being said, why is it that I would give $300 away when my parish needs to spend tens of thousands of dollars on the furnace? It's because this parish lives in what we know as a mentality of abundance. They believe that they are blessed and they believe that they are to share what they have, whether it's a little or a lot, no matter what's going on in the parish. They believe that they are supposed to share their blessings with the world. Yeah, the furnace is broke and it's going to cost a lot to replace. We still have an obligation to help our neighbors. We need to do that. 
we need to share what we have. We are well aware that this is a major expense that we did not expect. It is a frustration. It is anxiety producing. It is something that we worry about. But we know in this parish that we will get through this, that we will get to work, that we will fundraise, that we will put on dinners, that we will have casserole lunches, that we will seek donations from our congregation. We know that we will be provided for. The internet people, the choir, who the subscribers to this channel have, have shown the congregation that. They are seeing donations come in to the St. Margaret of Scotland Canada Helps uh, organization, the Canada Helps webpage, to help us with the furnace. People that we don't know are, are, are pledging donations to help us with the furnace. We have neighbors in this community, people who don't come to church, who are gathering together to figure out ways that they can help us pay for this furnace because they see a value in the building and in the congregation and in the, and in the purpose of this church. Yeah, the furnace is a big deal. We've spent hours talking about this. We have people who are, who are pulling out their last hair, trying to, trying to make this whole, trying to fix this whole problem. But that isn't going to stop this congregation. That would never stop this congregation from sharing what they have. Because ultimately, as cold as we might be in here, we know that there are people outside these walls who are going through worse. And we know as Christians that we're supposed to be there for them, that we're supposed to help them, not after we've helped ourselves, not after we are secure. The folks of this congregation know that this isn't one of those, that life isn't supposed to be, we can do this or we can do that. We can help this person or we can help that person. We can take care of ourselves or we can take care of others. We know that there isn't a need to choose. We know that there's enough to go around, that there's enough. We have enough to share. This is the way the church is supposed to be, right? This is the way that Christians are supposed to live. Yeah, life threw you a curveball. You still have an obligation to help out your neighbor. Yeah, you don't have a whole lot, but you may have more than the person beside you. You may, have, you may not have the money to help somebody. You might have the talent. You might have the time that you can give. There is always something. We are always abundant in something. We always have something to share. A lot of churches out there, a lot of churches out there are existing in something called a scarcity mentality, a mentality that is exactly the opposite, that says you don't have enough to share. And if you share what you have, if you give something from what you have, you'll die. You might not be able to pay your bills. You might, not be, you might not be able to cover that major unexpected expense that's coming, even though we don't know if it's coming. But just in case, you need to build up for yourself a, a, a war chest. You need to build up for yourself a massive amount of money just in case the worst happens. You can't share. Sharing could lead you to, to dying. But that's never been the Christian way. That has never been the way of the Christian church. The Christian church has always been based on the teachings of Jesus Christ, which is to share. It's to give to others. To take care of the people that need it. The Christian church, when it first began, we read in the book of Acts, all about helping out the people in their neighborhoods making sure people had enough to eat, making sure people's bills were paid, making sure people were clothed, making sure people had a safe place to be. That was the origin of the church. They, they walked their lives. They walked their lives of faith, believing that God would provide, believing that they had enough to share, believing that if they gave what they had away, God would give them what they needed. Why did I pledge $300 to Halifax Mutual Aid when I could have just given it to the church? Because we believe we live in abundance. We believe we have enough. 
we believe we will, see, we will get through this. We are not afraid of the future. I'm terribly grateful for that. I'm terribly grateful for the attitude of this parish. I'm terribly grateful for how it encourages me and how it teaches me to live my life. This is the way of Christ. This is the way of people of faith. This is the way of people of love. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray that no matter what comes our way, our eyes and our ears and our hearts will be open to all that is around us, all that we possess, that we will see the abundance in our life in whichever form it takes and that we would always be willing to share with others. Even though it may feel scary. Amen. Nemultus.